No Christmas set, no props, just Photoshop. Compliments of the season. If you don't have Christmas set, this is how you can easily turn your Play Studio background into a Christmas photo shoot using Photoshop AI Nano Banana. And if you need any of the background, I'll be leaving the link where you can download it in the description below of this video. And also don't forget to like this video and share this video to a photographer that you know. Let's jump right into it. Once we open this image inside of Photoshop, the first thing we are going to do, I'm just going to duplicate this layer by pressing on Command J and just crop this image 4x5 and just make it a little bit bigger. So somewhere around there works for me. And I'm going to change this fill from transparency to content aware and click OK. Now once you do that from here, all you have to do is select your whole canvas and just put a prompt and generate the background. But if you don't know how to generate prompt or you don't know what kind of background to use, this is how I get background and this is how I get prompts that I use to generate my background. Let me show you how to do that. Now since we are going for a Christmas fill background, what you are going to do, just come to Google and just come to this website, Pinterest.com and all you have to do from here is click on the search bar and just search for Christmas photo shoot background. You are going to get different background idea. So just choose any one you like and use it as a base. So for me, I picked this and I also picked this as a base. So for me, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to save this image. So I'm going to right click and just click on save image and just save this image right here where I can easily find it and also come to this other image, click on it and click on save image and just save it where I can easily find it. So that is the first step. The next thing we are going to do from here, we're just going to bring those images inside of Photoshop and just crop it. Then we generate the prompt from there. This is how you can do it. So I'm going to come to my download and just look for those images which I downloaded. This one right here and also this one right here. So I'm just going to right click and just click on open with and click on Adobe Photoshop right here. Once this image opens inside of Photoshop, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to crop it because I don't want this floor right here. I just want the rug. So I'm just going to crop this floor out because I'm going to be using this image to generate the prompt I want to use. So somewhere around here works for me. I'm going to click on OK. And I'm just going to save this image. So to save this image, I'm going to come to my file, click on export, click on save for web, and just save this image. So I'm going to create a new folder for this. I'm going to name it prompt and click create and just save it right here. Then I'll do the same thing for this other image. I'm just going to copy it. Then I'm still going to save this one. Let me copy it down a little bit. Okay. And I'm still going to save this one. So I'm going to click on file, click on export, and click on save for web. And I'm going to save this one inside that folder as well and hit save. Now, after that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to upload those images inside of ChatGPT and just ask it to describe the image in details for us. So that description is what we are going to be using as the prompt to generate our background for our image. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to come to ChatGPT and just click on this plus right here. I click on add photos and file and just look for that file right here. So I think it's on my prompt. Let me look for it. So this is just right here. I'm just going to click on this first one and click on open. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to ask ChatGPT to describe this image in details and just click on OK. So ChatGPT is going to give me a detailed description of this image. And the description right here is what we are going to be using as a prompt. All right. So what I'm going to do from here, after it has described the image, I'm just going to copy it. Once I copy it, I'm just going to paste it right here first. Once I paste it, I'm just going to edit it a little bit. So for the edit, I'm just going to change the image. I'm going to put make the background a then that's the only edit i'm going to do and just going to copy everything once i copy everything command c or ctrl c if you're using windows i'm going to come to photoshop now what i'm going to do for me i'm going to make a selection of the whole canvas so to make a selection of the whole canvas i'm going to press your command a once i press your command a i'm going to click on generative fee and if you can find a generative fee all you have to do is click on windows and click on contextual tags bar right here it's going to open up for you. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on generative fee and just paste that prompt right here. I change this Firefly model theory to the new Gemini Nano Banana theory and just click on generate. As you can see, it's just going to generate a beautiful Christmas theme background for us. But if I zoom in, the image is looking kind of blurry compared to the original image. So this is the generative image. You can see how blurry it is and 
this is our base image you can see the details all right but i'm going to show you how to fix that later so this is good but if you don't like it you can actually click on generate again it's going to give you another version now before we proceed i'm just going to try the other background remember we downloaded two background one is white and this one right here so let's try the other one and see what we are going to get if it's going to be more better than this one so i'll come back to my google chrome and just upload the other pictures i'm going to click on this plus icon click on file and just upload this one and i'm just going to ask it to describe this image in details for me so basically the same process this is how i get my prompt so i want to click on enter again so i'm just going to wait for it to analyze the image and just describe it all right it has finished describing the image for us what i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to copy this prompt this description and paste it here and i'm just going to edit the starting of the prompt so i'm going to remove the image and i'm going to add make the background an elegant then the description then i'm going to copy all and come back to photoshop i'm going to hide this one and just make a selection of the canvas again by pressing on command a or control a for using windows click on generative c paste that prompt here change it to gemini nano banana and just click on generate and let's see what you are going to get wow i really think this one looks a whole lot better than the first one let's see this or this honestly i'm confused this or this so i think i'm going to try another version of this let me see what i'm going to get i want to click on generate again i actually like this okay i think i like this version better than the first one let's see this or this this or this i'm going to go with this but I think this one looks good as well. Honestly, I'm confused right now. Or oh, let's try another version of this one. Let's see. Okay. I think I'll be going with this one. I think I like this one better because of the warm tone I'm getting. All right. So let's go with this one. So uh, before and after. So I'm going to delete this one below because i really don't need this one anymore so i'm going to delete this and just leave this one now that is the first step you just have to figure out the kind of background you want to use and if you don't know how to get prompts you can just look for any background you like just download it and just crop it and post it to ChatGPT and just ask it to describe the image and that description is going to be your prompt so for those of you who don't know how to create prompts like me this is how i create my prompt and this is how i get my prompt now that we've gotten our prompt and i've gotten our background the challenge now is actually making the image look realistic because obviously if i zoom in right now you can see the image is blurry like i said compared to the original one see the before you can see we have more, much details on this one than this one although the image is not that sharp all right so to make it look more realistic what i'm going to do from here after you settled for the background you want what we are going to do we're just going to make a selection of your canvas again and just remove the subject because I want to use one as my background to mask and I want to use one as my foreground. That's what I'm going to do. You are going to understand in a bit. So to remove the subject, I'm going to press or command A again and select the whole canvas. Click on generative fill again and just type remove subject. And just use another banana to remove the subject and click on generate. Alright, so it has removed the subject for us uh, before and after. And if you look at my layers, you can see we have two layers one without the subject which is this one above and one with the subject let me just rename it so you can understand so without subject please pay close attention and with subjects all right so those are my two layers i'm going to be working with so i want to turn them off for now and just remove my subject from the background now you can use any method that works for you but this is how i cut out subjects from the background i'm going to click on my quick selection tool for a more detailed and accurate selection i'm going to click on this job that arrow and make sure cloud is selected and just click on select subjects once i select my subject what i'm going to do for me i'm going to invert the selection i press no command shift i or ctrl shift i for using the windows and just press or command j to cut out the subject from the background and i can rename this layer one copy subjects so you can understand better and rename this one background all right now what i'm going to do for me with my subject layer selected i want to hold ctrl or command and click on the thumbnail layer of my background layer once I do that, it's going to bring back the selection. Then for me, I'm going to invert the selection again by pressing on Command Shift I, or you can just right click and just click on Select Inverse to invert the selection. From what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add a layer mask like this. 
then i'm going to drag let me just move this thing up so i'm going to drag my background layer below my subject layer like this once i do that i'm going to turn on my layer without my subject like this and just drag it below my background layer like this okay now the before and the after now you can look at the floor it's not looking real right that is why i have this my with subject which is going to be our foreground so once i turn it on it's going to show me how to position my subjects to make it look more realistic and also i can keep some shadows right here now to do that with this with my subject layer selected which is the one above the one that has the subject i'm just going to reduce the opacity all right so once i reduce the opacity i'm going to select this my subject layer and this my background layer and just press or command t to bring the transform to and just resize it to fit the one behind it all right so i think like this works and i'm going to click on ok or oh, i think i'm going to bring it down a bit all right up a bit let this work i'm going to click on ok now i'm going to move this opacity to 100 as well that is where the magic happened with this my with service layer selected i'm going to click on the layer mask before we continue if you are looking to enhance or improve your studio background I created 25 amazing smooth light effects that you can use to enhance your studio background and these are some of the smooth light effects and if you're interested i will leave the link where you can buy it in the description below of this video and there's a step-by-step -step video explaining in details how to use it now back to our video once i click on the layer mask since i want to reveal what is behind it i want to hide this one and just reveal what is be below it or behind it i want to pick on my brush tool my normal brush tool make sure i'm using a soft one brush make sure my foreground color is set to black because black hide and i want to hide what i'm seeing right now so that i can reveal what is below or behind it so i'm just going to increase my brush size my opacity is set to 100 fill is set to 100 now let me zoom in a little bit and just brush right here to reveal our subject behind as you can see so immediately i'm brushing you can see it's bringing back our original subject to this is with uh with without the mask and with masking without masking with masking you can see we will be our original subject so i'm not going to continue brushing just to bring back the original details of our subjects like this okay now i want to show you guys how to actually get the shadows if you're interested in that so i'm just going to brush like this okay all right so that is works for me let me just hide this layer I also hide this background layer. Now you can see our original shadow of our image. To bring them back, what I'm going to do with this, my background layer selected, right? This is without subject, which is our background. I'm just going to duplicate it. Once I duplicate it, I'm going to hide this one, this duplicated one. I'm going to hide it. Then the original one, I'm going to double click on it. Once I bring the layer style, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag the shadow part to this point. You can see, immediately I'm doing that, it's just going to bring back the original shadow or the original background but obviously it's looking too harsh so i'm going to hold alternate click and just take this part down so once i hold alternate i'm just going to split it so once i split it i'm going to take part of the black back and just play with it until i feel i have my original shadows all right so i think i've gotten some of my shadows and i think that this works for me and i'm going to click on ok now for this duplicated layer which is the one that duplicated once i turn it on it's going to hide that effect now the reason why i hide that effect is because i want to reveal it on only where i want it to be so i'm going to click on this layer mask of the duplicated one or the copy pick my normal brush tool make sure my final color is set to black and just paint on only where i want to reveal the shadow on which is this place right here also i'm going to paint this part right here to bring back some of the original shadows you can see we now have the shadows and it's looking a lot more realistic all right so what i'm going to do now if you feel your selection is not perfect enough which i think this selection is looking really good what you can do you can double click on your subject's layer mask so double click on it it's going to open your layer mask all you have to do from here you can copy my settings i'm using smooth of one feather 0 0.4 pixels then i'm just going to click on this decontaminate colors 63 percent and the add speed set is to new layer with layer mask and click on okay 
So that's just going to make the selection look even more realistic and it's going to create a copy of our subject layer. Now for me, you can choose to delete this subject layer because it's not really doing anything. We already have a copy of it. So I'm going to delete it. Now, last thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to add noise. So I'm going to click on my action and just click on noise right here just to make everything blend. And obviously it's looking too much. So I'm just going to reduce the opacity a little bit. So let's use about um, 10%. Okay, 10% works. It's just going to blend everything and make it look great. And let's see how before and after. I'm just going to group everything and just leave only the background. So see how before and after. How before and after. So if you have a Christmas tree coming up and you don't have prompts, you just have a place to the background, you can use this method to actually get that Christmas theme photo shoot. And if you want to learn more about background manipulation, in this one hour video right here, I explained everything I know about background manipulation from start to finish. You can check it out right here. I'll see you guys in my next one. Stay creative.